Hello Pisces, welcome to Lotus Heart Tarot. I'm so excited to have you guys here. Um, we're gonna dive right into your reading, you guys. If you are new to my channel, welcome, welcome. I am very happy to have you here. These are general messages, so take what resonates and leave the rest. All right, you all, I was very guided to grab every deck with flowers. <laughs> So here we're having it. Wow, Pisces, I told Spirit just one card. You know I can't get one card. Okay, Pisces, abundance again. How many times have you guys gotten this energy of abundance lately? Seriously. And these are all different decks. There are tons and tons of cards in here. They don't all say abundance. You know what I'm saying? Um, there's this energy though, Pisces, when you keep getting a repeat message, there's something really wonderful and beautiful, like opening up, blossoming, blooming in your life right now. Um, you know, uh, I am being really struck by really maintaining a heavy focus on the abundance that you see, that you feel, that you already know exists in your life. Everybody has some, you know, the fact that you are living and breathing is abundant in and of itself it is a miracle. You know, it is, a, if, if you actually think about this moment and all the things that are happening for you to exist in this moment, I mean, the earth is on an axis revolving. We're moving around the sun, right? We, there's all of these things taking place that we're not even mindfully aware of, that we're not even thinking about. And each and every one of those is a miracle that brings about abundance, that brings about the richness of being a spiritual being, having a human experience. So we are all abundant. Everyone has something to be thankful and grateful and to focus on in every moment. Um, and just even if it is for the moment itself. Um, but when we, we are in this window of eclipse and the more we do focus on the abundance in our life and the more we focus on what a miracle we are actually experiencing um, together, um, we can really emphasize those energies um, and increase those energies at this time. You also, Pisces, are getting love and you're getting serenity um, and this is lilac. Um, love has, is, um, the flower is the lilac. And I think the lilacs come out where, where I see them and smell them and love on them <laughs> around the beginning of May, usually around Mother's Day. Um, I always associate those things together. And so, um, you know, that can be something that's coming very soon or something that's going to open up for you very soon or something that's going to be revealed to you very soon. And you also have this serenity and this lavender. It, it's it, to me, it's just saying relax, just relax. You know, um, we, we, we try to control things. We try to figure things out. We try to process things. We try to kind of work them out in our mind. We try to you know, make ourselves feel really safe and secure with things, or, you know, we, we want, we want things to be unveiled. We want, we want to know what comes next. We want to know, is it going to work? Is it going to be good? Is it, you know, we're all, we all would really love to know those things. And the truth is energy is always changeable, but we bring about our best potential result by being relaxed and by trusting the process and trusting that every experience that life brings is a gift. Life itself is a gift. And the more we open to that, the more we open to flow. The more we try to control it and put a name on it and label it and say, this is what I need it to be. This is what I want it to be. Da, 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 da. The more we kind of do set ourselves up for disappointment or we actually set ourselves up not to see the abundance that already truly exists and that's already there. Um, but when we relax and we stop and we smell the roses and we, we remember what an actual miracle this moment is and being who we are in this moment exactly as we are, um, it, 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 is, it, is a, it is a miraculous event, really and truly. All right, so let's dive deeper into this energy. I'm going to grab some tea leaves on this. It's funny, lilacs are, are one of the only energies, like I, I can't really tell you when many flowers 
um, bloom. But I definitely know that the lilacs bloom in the beginning of May in the mid-Atlantic states. All right, um, we have four-leaf clover, great and good fortune, amazing. Um, okay, Pisces. You have quite a few um, tea leaves coming out. I really hadn't intended to take this many, but we're gonna do it. So, yeah, Pisces, I feel like the overwhelming energy or like the most important energy or the overwhelming thing here is this four leaf clover energy and this arrow energy. You are on the right path regarding some aspect of your life. Um, I think it's going to be becoming very clear to you. There is this energy of, around, you have dagger with marriage, you have fear, worries, tense situations around marriage. Um, you know, uh, I'm having so many things come to me right now, but our fears, you know, when we try to prevent our own suffering, when we try to live life in such a way that we are comfortable and that we don't experience any pain, when we're not willing to take on the entirety of the experience of life and we try that 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 is evidence that we are trying to control it when we are not just saying okay i take life as it comes um and so uh, there is this energy here around relationships where there there when you have had a bad experience in the past or you have had you know um difficulty in growing up different things like that things that make it feel, I feel like you can't trust the situation or you can't trust the person or you you feel a, tense, a tenseness about, I have to protect myself from something. Um, it closes you down. It does the opposite of, of kind of maybe what your intention is. Like if you want to open up to receive love, but yet you have a lot of fears around receiving love, then you're, you tense up, you get, you, your, those fears start taking root and you start hearing them in what people say, you start seeing them in the situation. Your, your mind does not create the universe, right? The universe was here before that, but your mind creates the experience that you have experiencing the universe. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, when we, t when we take something in, when we have an experience, right, we have it through our mind space. Our mind begins to judge it. Our mind begins to interpret it. Our mind begins to tell us like, you know, okay, this is what this is. This, it is good. It is bad. It, you know, this, this could potentially hurt you. This could potentially lead to your suffering. Um, you know, protect yourself from this. Don't fall for that again. Da, 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 da. All of those things are coming from that space rather than coming from a space of just opening up to allow an experience to be what it is and to just receive it and accept it and know that whatever it is you can handle it whatever it is it you will grow as a soul as a spirit as as you know from the experience itself because we learn from our experiences good and bad um I just feel this intensity around this energy right here of, of, you know, I want this, but then I'm closing down around it. And, you know, sometimes it's easier to see it in other people's behavior or in other people's actions. Like the way that they do it is really obvious to us, you know, because we don't do it that way or because we've already worked through that, that space. Um, but, but it can sometimes be harder to see it in ourselves and it's, it's like I just want to say you know what Michael Singer says and I'm taking this totally out of context I really highly love Michael Singer and his teachings and his work if you're interested in looking at them 
um, you can just put Michael Singer in your search bar on YouTube and it will take you to him. And if you are finding yourself in a space where you're really overthinking or you're feeling very anxious, um, you know, I, I highly recommend watching him um, or listening to any talk that he's ever given. I think that it will help you see how, you know, um, how small a thing it can actually be that we can make into such a big thing in our mind. It's our mind that does it. And, you know, it's not about resisting it. It's not about fighting against it. It's about relaxing. And it's about understanding that our mind is reacting to, to what is happening, like what we're taking in. And we don't have to react with it. We don't have to, we're different than our thoughts. You know, we're different than that voice. And we get to choose. We can say, it, it's hard to relax in those moments because everything in you wants to tense up. But when you relax, you work through it. When you relax, you 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 see that you survive it. It's And, and it comes and it passes and it goes. And it doesn't get blown up or trapped or prolonged or, um, you know, it's like the experience happens and then it's gone. We're not holding on to it, reliving it, going over the thoughts about it, telling the story about it, re-experiencing it, re-feeling it over and over and over again. So there's just this energy of kind of taking life as it comes right now. And when you feel fear or when you fear feel your mind start to really get um, like intrusive thoughts or something that like where it's really hard for you to let that go or it's something from your past that you've continuously revisited that you just don't want to revisit anymore that you're just it's like you know what I, like that came that happened that was an experience um, but you you don't want it to make you play small you don't want it to make you just stay in a comfort zone and not exist outside of it you know what I mean? You don't want it to dictate your present and your future. And so there is this energy of just being able to fully kind of release these things. And I think it, it, the way it's coming to me right now is as you, as you mindfully say, you know, I release this. I don't need to relive this. I don't need to go over this again. I don't need to travel this path again. I accept that this happened. This was my experience. Um, you can even turn it into, you can even begin to alchemize the energy by saying, this is what I learned from that. And like, I choose to release it. I choose to not continue to revisit it. Um, it doesn't define you. Your experiences do not define you. How you respond to them, that is a far more important part of it. And so, um, I feel like there's a lot happening here. You you have the moon here and it literally says changes in your life and, and the eclipse means change. So I, I feel like there's a lot here and it says chain of events that will affect your life. So there, there are things that are happening here around these eclipse energies that are going to change the, the course you're on or the path you're on. I feel like Pisces, this keeps coming up in your readings and it keeps coming up no matter what decks we use, no matter what happens. You're, you have an opportunity for abundance for sure. I believe you also have an opportunity for love. And I feel the more that you're relaxed and the more that you allow yourself to move with the ebb and flow of the universe and just take life as it comes and just stay present in this moment and not bring your past into it and not allow yourself to get too anxious about the future. Um, whatever tools, whatever, whatever methods um, that you can, that work for you or that you find that work for you, we're all different. So the things that work for me may not work for you. But it's like Michael Singer also says, you know, um, it, when you want to change your life, when you want to change the experience you're having or the way that you're, you know, the way that you're responding to your experiences, look at a drug addict. What will a drug addict do to get drugs? Just about anything, right? And it's that it comes from that want for drugs, that need, that desire for drugs. They'll do almost anything. And, you know, when it comes to you and to life, it's like you have to want it 
more than anything to you to to be at peace to be calm to be relaxed to be in the flow to allow what is coming to come um I'm just gonna leave that there. Okay, um, and, and also there is the ele element of trusting that it is all unfolding exactly as it's meant to. And, you know, sometimes that can be harsh and that can be painful and that can be hurtful, but it's not always like that. The one constant in life is that it will change. And, you know, without shadow, there light has no form. Light has no purpose for even being without shadow. So we just have to keep it all in mind. Sometimes we get so hell bent on, on ending our suffering or not suffering again once we've gotten out of it um, that we allow that to dictate the way that we live instead of just being open to life exactly as it is and seeing the abundance and seeing the beauty and seeing the perfection and trusting the universe to bring us what we need, you know? Um, so you have this energy of November and I'm trying to think of what, if there was any like major, like astrological events in November, I don't remember it. Of course, probably we had a new moon in Scorpio, probably it could have been in October and we may have had a full moon in Taurus. And we may have had a full moon in Gemini, but that also could have been in December. So, um, anyway, um, those time frames, Taurus and Gemini season may be important. I also got May here with the serenity. So there's a heavy emphasis on May. I do feel that way. And I also feel the number five, so I'm not sure. Um, but something may have happened in November or around November, or you may have begun manifesting something in November, or you may have, there's something here that I feel like you have the ability to change, or there is some continuation or some change of events that's happening around whatever this energy is, if you can remember what you were manifesting or experiencing in November. Um, you have this spear energy, heartache over what you no longer have. Um, and you know, this, the heartache from not having what you have from no longer having what you had comes from a space of attachment. Um, it comes from a space of, you know, you know, becoming attached to an idea, to a person, to a feeling, to a situation, to whatever. Um, and then it's like, when we don't have that anymore, we feel the absence of it because we allowed ourselves to get attached to it, which, you know, is, is definitely very human. Um, and then you have this vulture, depression, anxiety, worry that someone is against you. And then you have this door in between it, which is opportunities are waiting for you. And so to me, these are like the distractions. These, this is like the dark, right? Um, like if you, if... Um, I, I probably have said this, but when I was meditating once at a very difficult, difficult time in my life, it, all I could see, it was just, you know, you close your eyes and there's darkness, right? And then I saw a little pinpoint of light. And the more I focused on the light, the more the light grew. And I really felt guided to watch the light and to watch it as it grew. And I realized that as long as I know, if I never looked into the darkness, if I never looked to the left or the right or allowed myself to get distraction, distracted from things that were not on the path that was unfolding, unfolding in front of me, um, I, the light grew. And, but the minute I would turn and look into the darkness, I would have to refocus on the light and regrow the light. And so it's kind of like that, even with our mind, even with our thoughts, right? When we allow ourselves to, to, to feel the absence of, or to feel the longing of, or to, to feel like we are doing without something, or we have a lack or a scarcity of something, um, we, we get depressed. Um, and when we, uh, when we start to feel like the world is against us or that like everybody is a red flag or, you know, because this has been my past experience, it will probably be my future experience where I now know that people can be like this. So chances are this person will be like this and you, you know, where your focus flows, you know, <laughs> that's where your energy goes. 
And you know, what you think about, you bring about kind of energy here is what I'm getting. And so there, it's very important here to just focus on the light and to understand that these things are distractions. So there's a heavy emphasis here on just relaxing, allowing life to unfold, allowing what wants to reveal itself to reveal itself, not putting any expectation on it, not putting any attachment on it, not um, not getting to a place where it's like you feel you have to have this, you know, um, thing. Because I, I think it's all here for you, Pisces, and it's all coming to you. And I think the more you relax and allow allow the things that want to be taken from your life to go and allow the things that want to be brought into your life to come. I feel like there's this energy of you'll be very happily, you'll be very, I, I feel pleasantly surprised, but there is an energy here of like extreme happiness. So let's see. This can't even be your person's energy. On the bottom of the deck, you have the red rose. You have hidden secrets. Three things cannot be long hidden. The sun, the moon, and the truth. Um, so there may be something get, that's going to be revealed. I actually feel like this is the universe revealing for you the love and abundance that is in your life or that is coming to your life. You have asters here, elegance and patience. Nature does not hurry, yet everything is accomplished. Yeah, we don't need to force. We don't need to control. It really doesn't help the situation. Opening to flow is the most helpful thing. White rose, new start and wisdom. You guys keep getting this. Knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. And then you have violet. Wow, and the violets were out um, when I was up north in March. Okay, you have faithfulness and modesty. Modesty is a shining light that prepares the mind to receive knowledge and the heart for truth. Yeah, this is, you know, this is like whatever comes, comes, whatever goes, goes. Like I accept those things. Um, and I'm, I'm ready to receive whatever truth those at that experience that's on the other end of that reveals to me or brings to me. Okay. Wow, another card of violets. You're getting African violets, spirituality. It's time to connect with what you believe. I I have this um, phrase or this this thought. This um, it's something else that Michael Singer says. He says um, it's like uh, where you stop trying to suffer or prevent suffering. And where you start allowing everything in and appreciating it for the experience that it is and understanding that that is soul growth. That is, that is what we're here to do. That is how we expand and grow on a much bigger, higher, deeper level. Um, that is spirituality. It says it's time to connect with what you believe. A lot of times, guys, we walk around in life going, yeah, you know, I totally believe this or this totally resonates with me, da, da, da. But then we're not practicing it. We're not living it. Um, so I don't know. Take it as it resonates. You have gardenia, awareness. Wake up, roll the clouds away and look. Yeah, this is like when we're focused on lack, when we're focused on what we don't have, on more, when we're focused on the suffering that we have endured or, you know, even all the past things that happened where it didn't go our way or where, you know, our heart was the one that was broken, you know, we're going to continuously see that in every situation, no matter what. And so when we, when we bring our awareness to that energy and we, you know, peel all that back, and we look at it just more dimensionally. I don't know. It's the only word that's coming to me. Um, 
then we, and we, we see it as an experience and as a valuable tool for our own growth, then we begin to, to be able to peel back those clouds, the clouds of confusion, the clouds that are telling us, you know, you are always going to have this experience or you're always going to be getting the short end of the stick or, you know, you have always gotten the short end of the stick or nothing ever works out for you or nothing is ever fair for you. When we can peel all of that back and we can say every experience is rich, every experience is a learning opportunity, every experience I've ever been given, I have learned from, then it allows us to be the captain of our own ship. It allows us to say, you know, those experiences don't define me and don't continue to control me and own me. You know, they are nothing but a part of, of a greater um, thing that I've been on possibly for many lifetimes, a journey that I've been on for many lifetimes for my benefit, for my deeper understanding, for my deeper enlightenment, for my deeper growth as a, as a spiritual being. Um, again, and then you're getting this crocus, breathe, calm, rest, stop, and just be. And that's been this message through this whole reading is relax. Um, you know, the easiest way to begin to relax for me is to just sit down, put both my feet on the floor and just breathe, close my eyes and just focus on my breath, inhale and exhale, inhale and exhale. Immediately it brings you to another, it, it gives you space. It gives you space from everything that is outside of you. All right. Let's dive in, Pisces, and see. Oh my gosh, you guys are getting awareness twice. There's, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, you guys, seriously. You're definitely closing out a chapter here and you're definitely starting a new chapter and there is a heavy emphasis here on really allowing the past chapter to complete and I'm not talking about like, oh, let your past person go or anything like that. You know, I would never tell you that. Here's what I'm telling you. I'm telling you that when we are closing out a cycle you know, what I do is I will literally, when I feel myself in that space, I will ask my spirit guides, my angels, you know, whatever you believe in, whomever you, you know, commune with, if you commune with anyone. Um, and if not, you can put it out there and just say, you know, give me a sign, give me a signal. But you can say, help me to see, you know, the wisdom of w what can be gained from this experience. Help me to see, you know, how I can grow, how I can get the most from this chapter in my life, you know, and allow the answers to be revealed to you. You'll find sometimes, like if you do that, that you're like drifted away in thought and then all of a sudden you'll see an angel number on a clock. And that thought that you're having is in some way connected to the answer that you're seeking. Like you already know the answers. You already have all the tools and all of the information within you, but that is just like a confirmation almost. So there is something here where your mind is growing. I got this yesterday, I'm pretty sure for you too, where it's like you're really starting to see things in a different way. You're starting to see a bigger picture. You're starting to see how things fit together. And in this way, it's almost like you're, there's this energy of being able to sort of let go of the rain so tightly, just sort of, yeah, opening up, I feel like, or relaxing about what is happening and how it's happening. Um, yeah, there's a heavy emphasis on a return to inner calm and inner peace. If you have had some kind of disturbance, I feel like you're coming back to a place of peace and calm. If you're in a piece of, uh, if you're in a space of peace and calm, it's actually the awareness that you are here now that you have made it to the other side, that you are safely in a good spot. Um, you are ready for this journey in front of you, for this new chapter, for this new cycle. It is a blessing. I definitely get that it is a blessing. Um, 
there you have this obstacles and challenges and you know that's that's how we grow how we figure out um how we figure out how we develop the skills right to kind of navigate life on a on a more effective or efficient level or whatever you know as we move through life we learn it from a lot of times the obstacles and the challenges from having to find our way through something that doesn't readily have an answer that's not easy um you know necessity is the mother of all invention or whatever you know what i mean and you can see that the road here has this hole in it and how is he going to get across and how is he going to trust that those two boards are going to hold when there's this big abyss underneath him you know um and there's only one way to know and that's to try right and then you have this energy of the crown chakra and with the magician here and the crown chakra there's an opportunity i feel like to heal to release to let go of to clear this field um to like expand to grow to be more open to life coming just as life comes and know that you have through all of these experiences of allowing life to come just as it comes you have figured out how to navigate you have figured out how to make it uh, through across over uh, around whatever has been placed in front of you and that nothing exists that you can't find your way through or around or over or or whatever um especially when you connect to your highest and best self um, there's no need to suffer in silence. There just is no need to suffer in silence. There is no need. Um, and it's just like, if that is where you are currently in the timeline, you know, focus on happiness, focus on what does that need to thrive? What do you need to, how can you take one step in one direction that is going, that is more of what you want it doesn't even have to be um huge and it doesn't even have to be like i'm i'm overall i'm headed to this point it can just be for today i'm just trying to have more of this in my life and how do you go about getting that for yourself um i remember i i suffered a loss that was just so it felt catastrophic to me that and it was it was actually like a succession of losing people that i loved really is what happened and um but the the one of them was just it 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 was just it was unreal i just couldn't even wrap my brain around it and um i mean i I was so sad. I was so, I was grieving so heavily at that time in my life that I, I just knew I needed more peace. I just needed to feel more stable for, for just a, and one more moment of the day. If I could just get one more moment of the day where I felt more stable. And I actually found that through meditation. And I literally ended up meditating hours a day at one point in my life just to get through. But it was a real spiritual awakening for me. Um, and it was definitely, you know, it was the hardest time in my life, but it was also the most enlightening time in my life. Um, and you know, it wasn't about, I have this plan that I need to be healed and that I need to get over this loss. Cause I, certainly in this lifetime, I will not get over that loss. It will always affect me. It will always, it will always, I will always feel it somewhere. Right. But um, you know, it was about for one more hour, can I be at peace for one more hour? Can I just not feel this terrible pain? You know what I mean? And so we all there it's, it isn't even sometimes about seeing the whole entire picture. It's just about that first step or that first, um, that first thought that first you know oh that resonates okay all right i can take that on okay i can i can look through that lens okay i can allow that um i was actually i i think you guys know that i love james van prague like um i love james van prague and um he was talking to a healer and her title is actually so long that there's no way i could possibly remember it but she's a healer and um he said to her so how do you heal and she said you you 
allow yourself to feel the grief. Like that is the first step, not in a way in which you're going to get sucked under by it or swept away by it, but in a way in which, you know, you can feel it and you can release it because it is, it's like the Hoover Dam, you know, if, if you don't want the Colorado River running past your front yard and you put a dam up to stop it, to, to prevent it from going, you know, the, the water doesn't stop flowing, you know, that, that dam is holding it all in and it will hold it in as long as, you know, the engineering is there, but it's, it didn't go anywhere. You're carrying it around with you. You're still carrying it around. You're still dealing with it every single moment of every single day because you've got to maintain that dam. And so when you just let it out, when you let it flow, you know, you, you, you allow yourself to become at peace with it. You allow it to be an experience and that it, it happened. It may have affected you. It may have, you know, left its mark or, you know, whatever, but but it isn't something to where you have to put daily maintenance into maintaining it or holding it back or preventing it from affecting you. All right. So here we go, guys. I don't know. This is a very deep reading. <laughs> all right. Let's see. I don't know where this is all coming from, except that I really do think you're closing something out and you're coming into a new space here. Okay. Yeah. You've got the high priestess on the bottom of the deck. Yeah. Look at this. I mean, Pisces, you have love and you have love. So you have two loves. You have the chariot, which says determination on it. It's all falling on the energy of awareness. And you have the high priestess on the bottom of the deck. So yeah, you are moving toward you. I, you're, you may be coming into a space of love or where, um, you know, whenever we, when, when we are self-contained, right? Like, let's just say you're the hermit. Okay. Let's just say that you're by yourself in your house and you never leave. Um, and you know, you, um, you're not relying on anyone else for anything. You're just self-contained. Maybe you have one of those homesteads or something and you're able to provide your own food. You know, you don't need anybody for anything. Um, you, you aren't, um, challenged in the same way that you are when you are having, when you're having experiences of interacting outside of the world, like you're in a comfort zone. Can you still continue to grow? Yes. Can you continue to gain spiritual enlightenment? Sure. But is it the same as when you're interacting, when you're opening yourself up to having experiences with things outside of you? No. And so this is one of those things where I see here, there is this energy of moving toward a particular experience or a new beginning, whether you know it or not. Um, and with the energy of the chariot, you know, this is success. This is victory. This is someone who is well balanced. And it, because it's falling on this awareness, it feels as though there is something where we have come inside to establish inner harmony to make sense of a past situation or to make sense of where we're going or what we want or what has been, you know what I mean? We have gained the enlightenment that is possible from a past cycle or from our last cycle or even from a cycle of being by ourselves and being the hermit and being self-contained. But with the chariot and the ace of shells, it's time to share this energy with someone else or it's time for some kind of something external to you to be coming into your life, some kind of new beginning here. And with the high priestess on the bottom of the deck, it's like, you know, you know, it's time. Um, I, I feel. Okay. Wow. The high priestess on the bottom of the deck again. All right. So you're getting the eight of pentacles with the five of cups and the seven of cups. This is an energy of having, you know, there are disappointments that have happened in life. And then there are also the things that we've told ourselves about those disappointments. There are also like the burdens almost that we carry from those disappointments that 
are not even really a part of that experience. It's something that we have laid upon ourselves, And like with the eight of pentacles, this is where we're working on ourselves. This is where we are reaching a level of self mastery on this particular card. It actually says perfectionism and on the five of cups, it says disappointment. And on the seven of cups, it says illusion. And it, it's kind of like, you know, I keep talking about this, this, this keeps coming up of where we're not accepting life just the way it is. We're, we're putting these qualifications on it, how it should be, what we wish it was, that it isn't, how it falls short for us, that you're only setting your experience up for disappointment, which is not a comfortable way to go through life when you're putting all those things on it. And, you know, when, when it's based on this, this level of perfectionism, it's kind of like, you know, it, I, I want it all to be perfect all the time sort of energy. But what it really is about is our growth with the eight of pentacles. It's about having these experiences and allowing them to inform us how we work on it. Michael Singer, again, I'm talking about him so much today and I have listened to him a lot, but I always listen to him a lot. Um, he was talking about how, you know, somebody who doesn't treat you good exercises your backhand. And it's like you can be mad at them for exercising your backhand, but really you're getting the practice of using this backhand, the swing that you wouldn't normally use, right? You wouldn't use it on purpose. So really all of these things are teachers and they're teaching us how to have a better backhand, right? Um, I hope that makes sense out of context, but there's this energy of, you know, that, that which does not kill us makes us stronger. That which, that all of those things are experiences that we have gotten, it's exercised muscles within us that have helped us to get better at life. So it's not about avoiding those things. Like sometimes we think it is about, you know, saying, okay, I trust I'm having this experience for a reason. Okay. I am developing this other skill over here. I am, um, I, you know, this is making me better at this, or this is making me understand this, or, you know, you can't understand the trajectory of how a ball is going to hit or how it's going to react off your racket unless you actually are hitting it and doing it, right? I mean, you can guess, you could maybe do mathematical equations and drawings and stuff like that, or you could just go out there and experience it. And sometimes we're just afraid to experience it because it might lead us to disappointment or it might, you know, um, or because we have put this illusion that there is something perfect out there and that as long as we continue to work toward what is perfect, we will eventually get there. And then when we don't get there, then we're disappointed by it. And the reality is nothing is perfect. Everything is imperfect um, in a divine way. And so there's just this energy of, um, you know, learning how to master yourself in these experiences in the experience of being disappointed, in the experience of feeling like something should be different than it actually is, and learning how to accept it as it is. Um, so I don't know, take that as it resonates, um, but that is part of why we have had so many obstacles in our way and challenges, okay? Now you have the King of Shells and the Princess of Roses. And, um, wow. There's just this energy of kind of giving, getting out of our head and into our heart. You know, when we tell ourselves it should be like this, it should be like that, um, you know, I want this, I want that, we're, we aren't actually listening to our heart. You know, we're not actually motivated by, by something deeper. We're putting our own impression on the thing. We're not letting the thing be what it is. And, what, and, and, and when we don't do that, then we miss the beauty of exactly what it is. Because there is beauty in all things. It's just when we're fighting against it because it's not what we think it should be that we're disappointed by it. I, I don't know, okay? Just take it as it resonates. But there's something here about, you know, not not being able to... 
uh, um, like put make putting a higher priority on what it should be and what it isn't than what it is and the beauty of what it actually is and taking that into your heart space and accepting that and understanding that. All right. Let's see. Crown chakra. The wheel of fortune. Yeah. Luck is changing for you, Pisces, and it's taken a while. Um, okay. Okay. There is a big change coming. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to clarify because we have the tower, but there, something is really, really, really changing. You have the wheel of fortune and the tower, and it's kind of like sometimes things have to fall apart, and this is part of the plan. This is part of the greater plan. It can make you feel imbalanced, but there is a spiritual lesson to learn from them. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, you guys have some kind of love relationship coming in in a very big way here. Um, I don't know if you guys can actually see this, um, but you have this tower clarified by the Hierophant and the Two of Cups, and this tower came out with the Two of Pentacles, and the Two of Pentacles is this feeling of real imbalance, and it is also that going back and forth between love and fear kind of energy, and with the Hierophant and the Two of Cups, this feels like a balancing point. It feels like a commitment to a balanced point here um, toward a... Toward toward maintaining my own inner balance and therefore thereby bringing balance to whatever situation that I come into. So it, it, there's something here where, where something was perpetually making you feel imbalanced and it had to fall apart because it was never going to be the stable thing that you needed it or wanted it to be in the energy that it was. For some of you with the six of shells and the sun card, this could be a past person coming back around where the beginning was very rocky and shaky and made you feel very imbalanced. With the Hierophant, this person may be offering some kind of commitment here or some kind of contract here. Um, that or this can be where you have been feeling very imbalanced, but you, but you have learned the spiritual lesson. You have learned how to um, kind of maintain your own sense of calm and well-being and trust that everything is happening exactly as it's supposed to and that everything that is needed will come to you exactly as it's meant to come. And that being your solid footing is that belief and that faith and that hope. And that is the beginning of this legacy. That is the beginning of you being able or you being like ready or having someone come in out of the blue that sort of changes everything for you. And there is this energy of balance. There is this energy of happiness. You have the six of shells. You have temperance. You have the sun. Um, and so there's a lot of healing. There's a lot of clarity. There's a lot of stability here in this space. Um, it, it, it's not needing something more than what something is. You know, it, it's accepting it exactly as it is and being okay with that. And, and not even just being okay with that, but like finding the beauty in that and finding the harmony in that. Um, and, and seeing it very clearly. Um, and this begins a very strong and solid and abundant chapter in your life, Pisces. You, you have abundance, you have the 10 of pentacles, you have the wheel of fortune. There's a lot changing here and it's, it's something that's changing within you first. And then it's, then you'll see it manifest external to you when the things that I think you felt you were lacking or the things that didn't seem to be there in abundance show up kind of out of the blue when you're not expecting it. Um, through having come to some kind of peace and acceptance with exactly what is just the way that it is. All right, Pisces. Okay, that was like a very long-winded um, situation. And I hope that um, it brought you peace and clarity. All right. I'm always, um, you know, like, ah. All right, here we go. Let's get some messages for you, Pisces. If you're dealing with a water sign... You're getting, I watch your social media. I do love you. I feel so happy with you. 
retreat. Time alone or in nature will help you recharge. Trust. It is safe. It is safe to trust in this situation. And I want you back. If you're dealing with a fire sign. You were the best thing in my life. Intuition. You already know the answers that you seek. I will wait for a sign from you. I lost myself for a little while. Finding out the truth crushed me. I trusted you. Chemistry. Um, the attraction you feel is mutual. I feel the sexual attraction. And I feel so drawn to you. Okay. If you are dealing with an earth sign, stability, the relationship can stand the test of time. I hide behind material things. Sorry, you got flippers. I know I messed up everything. I don't want to let you go. Play hard, find time to laugh, goof off, and enjoy each other. Awakening, someone is undergoing a spiritual transformation. You inspire me. I'm grateful for the spiritual lesson. And if you are dealing with an air sign, will you ever make things right? Abundance, you've done the work. Abundance flows to you now. I'm starting to understand our connection. Patience, everything will unfold in divine timing. I am recovering. I left when I saw you with someone. Warning, don't dismiss the red flags here. All right, Pisces, this is what I have for you. I hope it helps. I really don't want to leave it on um, a red flag card because I'm very conscious of the energy, the last energy. Um, and so I am going to pull one more card. Um, let me just see. I'm going to just do one of these. I never leave um, a rough energy on the bottom of a deck and I never finish a reading with it. All right, you guys are getting constant and validation and caged heart. So, um, Validation says recognition or an affirmation that a person or their feelings or opinions are valid or worthwhile. We all need to feel that we matter or that how we feel makes a difference to those we care for. Validation can come in many different forms. A pat on the back, a bear hug on a day, we are down. A human touch, just as important as words and just as powerful. And then you're getting constant like the evolvement of earth and all its creations over and over she was like that for him the constant never ending they flowed together in a continual movement where one ends the other begins and where one begins the other ends constant rebirth in each other and never ending and then you have caged heart um, they cannot break free even when they wish they could something or someone has a hold on them and it limits them they have wounds, but beautiful flowers growing around them just within their reach. But from the hold of the roots, hold her hostage against her will. All right, you guys, this is what I have for you. I hope it helps. If it does, let me know. Like, share, subscribe, comment. And um, gosh, guys, if you are... Um, if this helps, just let me know. I really appreciate it, especially this reading, which was pretty abstract and out there. Um, anyway, gosh, until next time, I send you off with all my very best. Always, always, always. Bye-bye, guys.